Cancer is a disease that occurs when normal cells are transformed into such cells that will proliferate uncontrollably by responding differently to cell growth regulatory signals. Now there are many approaches to treating cancer. One is surgical, radiological, chemotherapy and biological approach. In the biological therapy, we use body's own immune system to kill the cancer cells. We'll primarily focus here on chemotherapy in pharmacology. Now, as cancer is a disease of mitosis, that means we can inhibit this uncontrollable division by acting on the cell cycle. That means we can divide the drugs into, this, uh, into the drugs that are specific for acting on the cell cycle that are cell cycle specific uh, anti-cancer drugs and the cell cycle non-specific drugs which can act on any cycle uh, or on any phase sorry and are not specific for a particular phase. Some cancers are also treated with a hormonal therapy uh, which will include anti uh, or antagonists of some hormones that are causing proliferation of some cancers. We have already talked about these anti-hormonal agents in the endocrine pharmacology and here we will specifically talk about the cell cycle specific and the non-cell cycle specific anti-cancer drugs. To understand the cell cycle specific anti-cancer drugs, let's first quickly review the cell cycle and then we will list the drugs acting on different phases of the cell cycle and thus inhibiting cancer cell proliferation. A typical dividing cell first enters the G1 phase or the pre-synthetic phase from the G0 phase which is the resting phase and in G1 phase there is synthesis of enzymes and other cellular components that are needed for DNA synthesis. Then it enters the S phase or the synthetic phase where DNA is replicated for the two dividing cells that will be produced. After the synthetic phase there is the G2 phase or the pre-mitotic phase where there is synthesis of cellular components for mitosis. After the G2 phase we have the mitotic phase, the M phase in which the mitotic cell division will take place. After the M phase the cell will stop dividing and go into G0 phase temporarily or permanently. Coming to the cell cycle specific anti-cancer drugs, they mainly act on the S phase, the G2 phase and the M phase of the cell cycle. First we'll see the drugs that act on the S phase of the cell cycle while DNA is being synthesized. They include the anti-metabolites and the DNA synthesis enzymes inhibitors. The anti-metabolites will act as substrates for DNA synthesis enzymes and compete with the natural substrates that are used in DNA synthesis such as purines and pyrimidines. The first drug is cytarabine which is a cytosine analog and will compete with cytosine of course. 6 mercaptopurin and 6 thioguanine are purine analogs and will inhibit purine synthesis. 5 fluorouracil uh, will inhibit the enzyme thymidylate synthase. Now this enzyme is uh, essential for making thiamine and thus DNA. By inhibiting this enzyme, the cell will not be able to replicate its DNA. Methotrexate is a folic acid analog and it will inhibit the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. And by doing that, it will prevent the fo uh, formation of tetrahydrofolate and thus Fol folic acid we know that is essential for the synthesis of purines and thymidylate and thus DNA and RNA synthesis. Second are the DNA enzyme, uh, DNA synthesis enzyme inhibitors. Now these are the enzymes that are used in DNA synthesis. They are hydroxyurea. They will inhibit the enzyme ribonucleotide reductase which converts the ribonucleotides into deoxyribonucleotides, irinotecan, which inhibits topoisomerase 1. Now topoisomerase 1 
uh, relieves the supercoils in the DNA which are produced by the helicase when it unwinds the DNA and topoisomerase cuts one strand of the DNA to relieve one twist while topoisomerase 2 cuts uh, both the strands and relieve, relieves two twists at a time. The topoisomerase 2 will be inhibited by the drug etoposide. Coming to the antibiotic that acts on the G2 phase of the cell cycle, it is bleomycin. Its mechanism of action is, binding, uh, is by binding to the DNA, undergoing oxidation and thus production of free radicals. These free radicals will then attack the phosphodiester uh, bonds of the DNA and will lead to breakage of the DNA strand. Coming to the drugs that act on the M phase or the mitotic phase of the cell cycle, they are called antimicrotubular agents. That is because we know that during early mitosis, microtubules are formed and extend from the centrioles to the centromeres of the chromosomes and then the chromosomes uh, or the separated DNA uh, goes to either side of the cell before microtubules start breaking down again. Now what these antimicrotubular agents will do? They will stabilize the microtubules when the cell needs to destabilize them and degrade them after the cell has been divided and they will destabilize them when the cell needs these microtubules for cell division. So that's why they are classified into two types. One are the microtubule destabilizers which will inhibit the assembly of microtubules uh, in the beginning of the uh, cell division and second are the microtubule stabilizers which will inhibit the disassembly of microtubules which uh, is needed at the end of the cell division. The microtubule destabilizers will include winblastin and wincristin which will block tubular polymerization that is they will not let the monomers uh, convert into polymers and thus will inhibit assembly. While the microtubule stabilizers include paclitaxel that will block the depolymerization of uh, microtubules thus will inhibit the disassembly of microtubules. Now the drugs that act on the cell cycle that is the cell cycle specific drugs they are mainly active against those tumors which have an increased growth fraction such as the blood cell tumors that is leukemias. While the non-specific cell cycle anti-cancer drugs can act on both type of tumors that is with high and low growth uh, fraction. The non-cell specific anti-cancer drugs include alkylating agents and anti-tumor antibiotics. What the alkylating agents do is we know that DNA has two strands and they bind opposite base pairs. What the alkylating agents do is they bind two guanine uh, bases and will lead to the formation of cross links which will lead to broken DNA and will arrest the cell cycle in any phase leading to apoptosis or programmed cell death of the cell. Alkylating agents involve nitrogen mustard such as cyclophosphamide, cisplatin, procarbazine and nitrosoureas such as lomastine and carmastine. The second non-cell cycle specific drugs are anti-tumor antibiotics and they work by three mechanisms mainly. One is free radical formation, second is topoisomerase 2 inhibition and three is intercalation of DNA. They include the drugs doxorubicin and donorubicin. Now we will briefly discuss the toxicity of anti-cancer drugs which are very important. They can be divided into the non-specific or general toxicities that all of the drugs have and the specific toxicities that are specific for certain drugs. The first non-specific uh, toxicity is that of uh, normal dividing cell toxicity. Now as these cells are cytotoxic and inhibit cell division of neoplastic cells which is the main target but other rapidly dividing cells are affected too. They can be the bone marrow cells leading to leukopenia, egg granulocytosis, thrombocytopenia and aplastic anemia etc. This can leading to increased bleeding and decreased immunity. The immunity 
uh, decreased immunity can lead to increased risk of infections by fungi, bacteria, viruses, parasites, etc. While the other problem of uh, leukopenia, agranulocytosis, uh, bleeding and anemia can be decreased by administering platelets, platelet transfusion, uh, granulocyte colony stimulating factor, erythropoietin and bone marrow transplant. Apart from the bone marrow cells, the gut mucosal cells are also affected leading to GI bleeding, ulcers, etc. The skin and hair are also uh, rapidly dividing cells and will lead to alopecia which is usually reversible on stoppage of therapy. The gonads also have rapidly dividing cells and will lead to infertility in both sexes. In pregnancy, the fetus will undergo abortion and also have teratogenic effects due to uh, their ability to cause mutations. Another important uh, anti-cancer drug side effect is hyperuricemia that is due to increased cell death and thus increased nucleic acid release which is metabolized into uric acid. To manage this, we can give allopurinol uh, but important drug interaction should be remembered while giving an allopurinol to cancer patients because they might be taking 6 mercaptopurin and 6 mercaptopurin is also metabolized by xanthine oxidase and this is the enzyme that is being inhibited by allopurinol and thus this can lead to increased concentration of 6 mercaptopurin in the blood. Hyperuricemia can also be managed by hydration and corticosteroids. Anti-cancer drugs have also been associated with secondary malignancy or mutagenicity that is because they, because they damage DNA and cells by in interfering with the DNA that's why they can lead to mutation and lead to cancers most commonly leukemias and the one drug that is most associated with leukemias is procarbazine. Another a general side effect is nausea and vomiting by directly stimulating the chemo trigger zone and cisplatin is the most potent cause of nausea and vomiting and it can be managed by anti-emetics such as ondansetron which is a 5-HG3 antagonist which will act on the chemo trigger zone 5-HG3 receptor and inhibit vomiting. Coming to the specific toxicities, pulmonary fibrosis and pneumonitis is associated with bleomycin. Now here I need to mention another drug that causes pulmonary fibrosis is amiodarone if you remember from antiarrhythmics. Second type of toxicity is cardiotoxicity that is a delayed congestive heart failure that is mostly due to the drugs doxorubicin and donorubicin. This can be remembered by ruby, red and heart, red heart. This is due to the formation of free radicals which are not effectively detoxified in both in the cancer cells and in the heart cells. Cisplatin and methotrexate are both associated with nephrotoxicity and this nephrotoxicity can be managed by giving amiphosphine. Another unique side effect of cyclophosphamide is hemorrhagic cystitis. Now this occurs because cyclophosphamide is converted into the active cytotoxic agent and another toxic metabolite that is called acrolein. This toxic metabolite will irritate the bladder mucosa and cause hemorrhagic cystitis and this condition can be managed by administering mesna, this is a drug which will inactivate uh, acrolein. Cisplatin has also been associated with neurotoxicity, that is autotoxicity leading to deafness. Peripheral neuropathy is common with vincristin and cisplatin. Another side effect can be megaloblastic anemia with methotrexate administration. We know that methotrexate inhibits folate synthesis and decreased folate causes megaloblastic anemia. We can manage this uh, condition with administering folinic acid which is an analog of folic acid 
but uh, this is a risk to take because uh, folic acid can also be taken up by the cancer cells. Lastly, one side effect that is associated with a drug that we did not discuss is pancreatitis uh, caused by asparaginase. Now this is an enzyme, a drug uh, that is used in cancer therapy to convert asparagine into aspartic acid. Now asparagine in the normal cells can be synthesized but uh, cancer cells depend on exogenous asparagine. So when this is given, it can cause pancreatitis. That's all about anti-cancer drugs.